Hey everyone, Paddy from Smarter here. This is a follow-up video to my previous video on PM 2.5. If you haven't seen my earlier video, go out, go and check that out and you can learn a little bit about PM 2.5. Today we'll talk about its kind of its big brother, PM 10. So PM 10, what does that mean? If you know what PM 2.5 is, then you'll know that PM 10 is particulate matter that's 10 microns or below in size 5. So if you notice, PM 10 is anything smaller than 10 microns, which includes PM 2.5. Its aerodynamic diameter is less than 10 microns. So just how small is that? Again, I'm gonna pull out one of my hairs to give, give an indication. And PM 10 is roughly five times smaller than the width of a hair. So we can just about see a hair. Imagine something five times smaller than this. You're, you're talking pretty much the size of PM 10. So pretty small, but possibly still visible to the naked eye under some circumstances. You may have already seen PM10 because if you know the dust that kind of settles on surfaces or settles on the ground, more often than not, that is PM10 as opposed to PM2.5. PM10 actually is much heavier than PM2.5, so it generally falls to the ground quicker and you'll find it on more surfaces than you will PM2.5. In contrast to PM2.5, uh, PM10 is generally, if we're talking outdoors, strong winds can often cause and create a large amounts of PM10. Things like dust from surfaces, from, from soil, from kind of dry ground, wind kicking that up can generate PM10, as can sandstorms, so that's another form you know, of PM10. Coal burning again produces a lot of PM, PM10, as do wildfires. So burning of forest, burning of wood produces a large amount of PM10. Uh, finally, pollen is, believe it or not, a kind of PM10. We generally wouldn't consider pollen to be a pollutant, but actually it's a form of PM10. So indoors, PM10 comes from cooking, from burning fires or candles, smoking, and also mold and bacteria are two types of PM10. Now, how can we measure PM10? Slightly different from PM2.5, most monitors, like this one I have here, don't actually measure very accurately PM10. So it's a little bit more difficult to measure PM10 in your home. Some of these monitors do claim to measure it, but their accuracy is not that great. Generally, the outdoor monitors that governments use and that large organizations might use to report data, they do measure PM10. So that's one easy way to check out PM10 is to pick up your phone and open up an app on your phone to check the outdoor PM10 levels. Again, uh, other ways to see PM10 is to look outside, more visible than PM2.5, so you can generally see it, dust, uh, sandstorms, things like that. And even uh, in some, some situations, if it's pretty windy, you can even feel the PM10 on your face, you know, uh, against your face. Ima imagine yourself cycling past a construction site on a windy day and that kind of that sand and that dust being kicked up, that is uh, more often than not PM10. The health effects of PM10 aren't quite as severe as PM2.5. Being that much bigger, our nose uh, and our throat do a much better job actually of protecting us against PM2.5. They can do a pretty good job of filtering it out. Our bodies have had thousands and thousands of years to adapt to PM10. So we do a pretty good job of filtering it out as opposed to PM2.5, which is a kind of a, a more modern problem that our bodies haven't really had time to adapt to. So PM10, we do a pretty good job of filtering it out, but it can cause some kind of irritation, uh, you know, to the eyes, to the nose, uh, th th things like that. And it can, if it does get into your lungs, it still can cause some of the same effects of PM2.5. Again, it's pretty simple to protect yourself from PM10. Outdoors, wear a mask and indoors, turn on your purifier and sit back and breathe some clean air. On that note, cheers, and I will do just that here.